Good morning, and you guys caught me talking about rocks. Welcome back everybody, I'm Ellie Knows Rocks, and today we're talking about pyrites. Hi. He's all, being all loving. Yeah? Well, love you, bye. That was Dan. Anyways, this is a series where I don't cut, you guys are seeing everything, I'm just talking about the minerals. So, pyrite. The original gold, just kidding, the original fool's gold, often referred to as iron pyrite. This chemical structure is FES2, and it is a sulfide mineral, often associated with hydrothermal veining, hydrothermal fluid, uh, quartz veins, and the like thereof. It is very, very common for this mineral to have awesome, cubic structure. You guys have seen the crystals that have come out of Sweden and places uh, not in the United States that I can't name off the top of my head because I don't remember right now. I'm sure I could look in one of the books that I have that tells you exactly um, <laughs> the different places you can find them, but these were found in the United States, specifically found within a copper porphyry. A lot of minerals that are associated with these right now um, there is some covalite with this one. There's also uh, chalcopyrite with this one, which means it's got some copper in there as well. So it's not just pure pyrite. Um, what can I tell you about this guy? Um, of course, fool's gold. Uh, people used to think that they strike it rich, especially when they were on an old quartz vein and they hit a big old chunk of this. I mean, could you imagine like seeing part of that thinking, wow, I just hit the mother load, but really it's, it's just a huge, huge piece of pyrite. So it's named after, uh, pyrite is a Greek word, I guess, for fire. And what's kind of cool about this is you get discs of pyrite as well. I've never found one, but they're radiating out from the center and it almost looks fibrous, but they're very, very compact. They used to strike these and you can actually strike them to make fire, almost like a flint. And so I think that's probably why they actually named it after that Greek word. I'm just assuming and pontificating with myself. It doesn't have any real cleavage. Once you break it, it kind of has an uneven fracture. There's nothing that's going to make those beautiful square lines like we love to see in galena or calcite, things like that. It's just not gonna happen. That's okay. The crystals that it has make up for it. So you can get, again, those very awesome cubic crystals, or you can get like the pyramidal crystals. Um, I was actually just reading the name of it because I couldn't remember. Uh, I guess they're octahedral pyrite crystals, which gives you that pyramid type shape. And yes, I'm reading that from one of my books because I could not remember the shape to save my life this morning. But I did want to talk about this beautiful guy. And there are different colors of pyrite because of different mineral associations. Of course, this one has a lot of different copper minerals in it. Um, it even has some uh, zeolite on the back of this one. And again, you've got some uh, pretty messed up covalite in there. It's even some of it on the back. You've got a little bit of chalcopyrite in this one and even some what they call peacock ore, but most people misassociate that and it's just not the right type but, and it's just a tarnished chalcopyrite, which is right, what is right here. And so we have a little bit of tarnished chalcopyrite in association with this sort of pyrite. And you can see how different colors they are. This one's that traditional, probably, which most people would have thought, oh my gosh, I got gold, I struck gold. Not necessarily, or even at all. Even though pyrite is associated with gold in quartz veins, especially hydrothermal veins, because as they say, gold rides an iron horse, this being the iron, this FES2, and it being deposited along quartz veins. Now, one of the interesting, interesting facts about pyrite, all on its own, with just pyrite and water and time, pyrite will create its own sulfuric acid, being that it is a sulfide mineral and its other counterpart is sulfur, uh, it has this horrific smell when it's been on a big dump pile, especially at old gold mines. 
you will often see a big dump pile and it's kind of this tarnished yellow color. And when you get close to it, it almost has this really thick crust on it. Like it's, it's super, super hard. Well, that's because over years and years and years of time, this pyrite has weathered out with water and it can deteriorate rather quickly where it just turns into this funky acid. Another interesting fact about this is when you're finding uh, like quartz veins uh, on like the, the surface. And so you're finding that surface rock. Uh, it's called a leach cap in some cases in big mines. And the leach cap is where every one of the minerals that are associated with anything leach out. One of those being pyrite. And you can tell very specifically because a lot of the times, hopefully I'm, I'm hoping you can see these cubes in here. Those are really pretty cubes. And you can kind of see them on this side too. But those cubes will be inside of like a quartz vein. And as the water starts to, and, and so let me digress a little bit. The quartz formed and solidified around that pyrite cube or the pyrite cube grew inside of the quartz fluid um, it, before the quartz reached its eutectic point to start cooling and then you know no more formation could happen no more no more growth for the the pyrite crystal could could keep going so the quartz you know and the pyrite grew together you have this crystal but it's there's still enough of it exposed to the air and water once it, that whole rock formation gets pushed to the surface, that the pyrite interacts with the water and actually leaches itself out of the quartz. So inside of the piece of quartz, you'll get this awesome remaining negative of the pyrite crystals, which is pretty sweet because it just tells you one, that yes, deeper down in this vein, there could be possible minerals that you're looking for. Or it, maybe that was it. Maybe the leech cap that you found is the only thing that was associated with pyrite or other minerals. Because again, when pyrite leaches out, especially if it's done by water and if its own volition of making its own sulfuric acid, gold then falls out of the vein. And so there's a lot of people that look for leech cap when they're looking for gold because if you see that that quartz vein has just been deteriorated, you see these negatives, you need to look for gold in that immediate area because if there's any there, that's gonna be your best bet to find it. So yes, not only is it considered fool's gold, it can be an awesome tracer for gold as well. And to boot, it's really pretty. Uh, I believe that they will use, you know, some form of pyrite for jewelry and that kind of thing. But um, honestly, it's, it's about a six on the Mohs hardness scale. Of course, it has a beautiful luster. It's mainly, or it's really, really massive. And when you see it associated, you can see it in these veins, the metal sulfide veins. So there is some galena in here, uh, which is the gray in this area uh, mixed in with the pyrite. But just looking at the vein association with this rock and how that hydrothermal fluid just pushed everything together and it associated that is a true like living testament of exactly what happens with this of finding the pyrite attached in situ to the host rock which is pretty cool so i hope you guys enjoyed catching me uh talking about rocks or minerals uh to be clear a rock a mineral is not a rock, a rock is not a mineral, uh, but they are associated. So a mineral is one or more elements and a rock is two or more minerals, just so you know. And so yes, even though this is a mineral, it, it is a metallic mineral and it is associated with a rock behind it. I think it's easier to say you caught me talking about rocks and you caught me talking about minerals, but you guys let me know. I can totally change that up. <laughs> Bye.